A to Z Mysteries, Book Number Nineteen, The School Skeleton, by Ron Roy. Chapter Three. What did you call your story? Josh asked Dink at their lockers. It was three o'clock, and everyone was going home. Dink grinned as he put on his jacket. It's called Josh stole the school skeleton and should go to jail forever. Dink said, "Ha ha," Josh said. "Mine's called the skeleton's curse." Ruth Rose said, "Mr. Bones puts a curse on all boys with red hair." "You guys are a riot," Josh said as the kids walked toward the exit. Miss Shotsky poked her head out of her office and called to Dink. How's that finger? Fine, thanks," Dink said, wiggling it at her. "Well, come on in and let me give you a couple of band aids to take home." "What a baby," Josh whispered as the three kids piled into Miss Shotsky's office. "He's just jealous of your Batman band aid," Ruth Rose said. "Yeah, right," Josh said. "Batman is out. Spider Man rules the school." The kids followed Miss Shotsky into the back room. While Dink got more band aids, Josh and Ruth Rose examined the corner where Mr. Bones usually hung. Look, there's a footprint in the dust. Ruth Rose said. Miss Shotsky and Dink walked over to look. It looks like a sneaker, Dink said. See the zigzag tread? It's the left foot, Josh pointed out. An adult size. Ruth Rose said, "Maybe the thief made this footprint when he lifted Mr. Bones off the hook." Dink said, "Could be. It sure isn't my footprint." Miss Shotsky said, holding her left foot up. Her white nurse's shoe was shorter, and the tread on the bottom was different. Were any teachers in here this morning? Ruth Rose asked Miss Shotsky. "Not that I know of," the nurse answered. After I got here, I went to the teachers' lounge to make coffee. I came back at eight o'clock, but I didn't even look at Mr. Bones. So whoever took Mr. Bones had to do it between seven thirty and eight, right? Asked Josh. Miss Shotsky shook her head. Nope, I was in and out of here all morning, visiting the first and second grade rooms. Anyone could have taken Mr. Bones any time before ten o'clock when Dink came in with his paper cut. Just then, there was a soft knock on the examining room door. "Excuse me, but could I sweep this room now?" Someone said. It was Mr. Nieder with his broom. "Hi, Tom. Come on in," Miss Shotsky said. "Could I make a drawing of this footprint before you sweep?" Josh asked Mr. Nieder. "Sure. I'll start in the front office," Mr. Nieder said. "And we should measure it," Ruth Rose said. Miss Shotsky gave Josh a paper and a pencil. She handed Ruth Rose a ruler. Josh made a quick sketch of the print. Be sure to get that zigzag pattern, Dink said, peering over Josh's shoulder. Ruth Rose measured the footprint. It's exactly eleven inches long, she said. Josh wrote eleven inches next to the drawing. So all we have to do is find out who wears this kind of shoe, Josh said, and we find Mr. Bones and win the tickets to the aquarium. But a lot of the teachers wear sneakers, Ruth Rose said. How do we find the right one? I know who we can ask, Dink said. Mrs. Waters. All the teachers walk past her desk to get their mail. Maybe she notices the shoes they wear. Let's hurry before she goes home," Ruth Rose said. Miss Shotsky opened a small door next to her filing cabinet. "Here's a shortcut to the principal's office," she said. Short enough, when the kids walked through the door, there was Mrs. Waters at her desk. She was staring into her open purse. "Hi, kids," she said, closing her purse and putting it in a drawer. "Still here? We're trying to find the skeleton." Ruth Rose said, "We found a footprint on the floor where Mr. Bones hangs." Dink said, "It's a sneaker." We think the guy who stole the skeleton made the print. Josh said, "If we find him, our room wins the tickets." 
Just one footprint? Maybe you should be looking for a one-legged thief, Mrs. Wanders said with a twinkle in her eye. Josh giggled and placed his drawing on her desk. Do you know anyone who wears this kind of sneaker? he asked. Just then, the small door opened again. Miss Shotsky peeked in, wearing her red scarf. Good night, all, Miss Shotsky said. Happy skeleton hunting, kids. Good night, Claire, said Mrs. Waters. The door closed. Mrs. Waters studied Josh's drawing, then shook her head. I usually notice what the teachers are wearing, she said, but I never see the bottoms of their feet. She chased the zigzag tread with her finger. Although this pattern does seem familiar, I feel sure I've seen it somewhere. She smiled, knowing me I'll think of it halfway home. Mrs. Waters glanced at the clock and stood up. Time for me to leave, she said, heading toward her coat closet. But when she tried to open the door, it wouldn't budge. Mrs. Waters walked back to her desk and pulled her purse and a sweater from a drawer. First I lose my powder, she said. Now I think I'm losing my head. Just then, Mr. Dillon appeared in the doorway to his office. Hey, kids, still here? Dink told Mr. Dillon about the footprint in Miss Shotsky's examining room. Josh showed him his drawing. We think the thief was wearing sneakers like this, Ruth Rose said. Well, that leaves me out, Mr. Dillon said. He raised one foot and showed the kids the smooth sole of his shiny tassel loafer. Me too, Mrs. Waters said. She pointed a small high-heeled shoe at them. That footprint is twice as big as my feet. Chapter 4 As the kids walked home, Josh studied his drawing of the left footprint. How can we find the guy who wears the sneaker? he asked. It could be a woman, Ruth Rose said. Josh turned and grinned. What about Mrs. Eagle, he said. Maybe she stole Mr. Bones. Ruth Rose laughed. No, her feet look as small as my mom's, she said. My mom wears a size of six. Let's go to my house and make a list of all the grown-ups at the school, Dink suggested. Then we can figure out how to check their shoes. Why don't we go to your house and make a snack? Josh asked. How about a turkey sandwich and apple pie with vanilla ice cream on top? How about guinea pig food? Dink said. In his kitchen, Dink found a plate of cookies and a note from his mom, saying she was shopping. The kids walked up to Dink's room with the cookies and Josh's drawing. Dink handed Ruth Rose a pad. While she wrote, Dink went to his dad's closet and found a pair of his sneakers. On the bottom, he found a circle with size 10 stamped inside. Then he got a ruler and measured the sneaker. It was 11 inches long, the same as the footprint they had found in Miss Shotsky's office. Guys, I think the skeleton snatcher wears a size 10, he said. I'll bet a lot of the male teachers wear that size, Josh said. Ruth Rose showed them her list. I got 13 people, she said. Did you count Mr. Dillon and Mr. Nieder? Dink asked. Ruth Rose nodded. Yup, all the adults who work at the school. We can cross off five names, Josh said. Mrs. Eagle, Mrs. Waters, and Miss Shotsky all have smaller feet, and Mr. Dillon was wearing loafers today. Who's the fifth? Dink asked. The custodian, Mr. Nader, Josh said. Why cross him off? Ruth Rose asked. He wears sneakers. Josh laughed. But they're the biggest sneakers I've ever seen. I think he wears about size 13. Ruth Rose put an X in front of the names of the five people Josh had mentioned. Dink looked at the eight remaining names. Four women and four men, he said, dropping a hunk of cookie into his guinea pig's cage. Do you think one of them took the skeleton? One way to find out, Josh said. Check their shoes against my drawing. How do we do that? Dink asked. 
Just tell them about the footprint we found, then ask them if we can measure their feet and check the treads of their sneakers. There's one problem, Ruth Rose said. If one of the teachers did take the skeleton, he won't let us measure his feet. Then we'll know he's the guilty one, Josh said. But what if two teachers say no? Bink asked. Then we still wouldn't know which one did it. But at least we'd have narrowed it down to two, Ruth Rose said. Then we could figure out what to do next. We'd better decide, Josh said. Every kid at school wants to win those aquarium tickets. But we're the only ones who know about the footprint, Ruth Rose said. We've got a head start. Not for long, Josh said. Miss Schatzky and Mr. Nieder saw the footprint too, and I showed the drawing to Mrs. Waters and Mr. Dillon. Pretty soon, the whole school will know. Okay, let's talk to those eight teachers tomorrow, Dink said. We could put notes in their mailboxes, Ruth Rose suggested. Great idea, Dink said. He sat at his computer, and Josh and Ruth Rose gave him suggestions. This is what they came up with. Dear, blank, we have a clue to the mystery of the missing skeleton. May we talk to you today? Please check yes, blank, or no, blank, and put this in Mrs. Eagle's mailbox. Thank you. Signed, Dink Duncan, Josh Pinto, and Ruth Rose Hathaway. Dink printed eight copies. Using Ruth Rose's list of names, the kids addressed a letter to each. That should do it, Dink said when they were finished. We'll ask Mrs. Waters to put them in the mailboxes tomorrow morning. And by afternoon, our class will have tickets to the aquarium, Josh said, grinning at his friends. Don't get your hopes up yet, Josh, Ruth Rose said. Why not? If we find the right shoe, we find the person who took Mr. Bones, right? So we win the tickets, right? Ruth Rose shook her head. Wrong. We have to find the skeleton to win the tickets, she said. While we're running around measuring people's feet, some other kid might find Mr. Bones.